perfect. It's not a one on board. So that's the one. That is a Mike Boss. A Mike knows. I assume he's going to be sitting over there, so he's probably going to be yeah. on. He just finished in here, so he may be headed over there. He appears to be working on it. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Colton brought a bunch of his stuff. 
<laughs> but um, so yeah, um, so I wonder what she's Jane picking Green up. For Oana, um, and Richard and Riley. Um, they both started in Cubbies here at St. Matthew's Church in fifth through sixth grade at TNT. Uh, they have continued working through the middle school track program and the high school journey program center. Oh, um, well. Each Bible study handbook for track and journey includes daily Bible reading and studying along with a verse memorized each week from 24 to 28 weeks. Spread throughout the length of a typical okay. school year. Be careful. The books okay. also include a variety of activities that encompass reading through the entire Bible over a few years, giving summaries of Bible books read, attending conferences and board workshops, and completing service efforts. Within their church, a one program and for their community. The Meredith Award okay. is given to any student who completes batteries. any six third through twelfth grade handbooks, including new testament summaries and all associated activities. This year, Riley Gale has earned Two. the Meredith Award. or studies in all associated activities. Citation achievers memorize over 800 verses and read the entire Bible before earning this award. Some colleges and universities award scholarships for earning this award as well. The real award, however, is that these learners have God's word in their heads and hearts and have learned how to study God's word and apply it to their lives. This year, Richard Beale has earned the Citation Award in PIN. Awesome job to you both. And I was not about to pick that up because mm -mm, I would end up breaking it. So, um, Let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> it is definitely not a small feat, in, um, especially, you know, other kids uh, throughout the Awana program. It's such a huge commitment, and it's an honor um, to be the commander. Um, and so hopefully soon we will get back in and start memorizing more verses, and uh, we'll leave it up to God, and God's will be done. Thank you, guys. Good morning. Good morning. I don't have to stand over there. I can, but <laughs> we're figuring this out. Um, good to see everybody uh, in our continuing saga of COVID. A um, couple of just a, not really announcements, but yeah, a couple of announcements, I guess. One would be uh, Lynn Thomas continues to to struggle uh, getting better, uh, and her small group has uh, been doing some meals. If you'd like to help out with those meals. Um, you can contact Kareen, and they have some open spaces, uh, and if you can help out, that would be great. Deacons, remember, we have a meeting uh, coming up uh, Thursday night, and you'll want to be there for that. Um, Richard, we should have said while he was up here, too, he participated in the homeschool uh, graduation uh, yesterday, and uh, so he is officially graduated with ceremony and all. I'm going to save prayer concerns for when we pray. I brought my mask up here because I just think, you know, I think it's important for us to remind folks, some of you have your mask on, some don't. That's all that is up to you. We recommend the mask, so I'm recommending the mask, but I think it's so interesting that two or three weeks ago, a bunch of retailers, you know, had to, they mandated, and they got in so many fights, and customers picking on each other. Please do not pick on fellow church members about a mask, okay? If you're concerned about germs passing into your nasal cavity, wear yours, okay? And stay distanced from, and we'll all be okay. 
I don't want us to be one of the governors. The first week, 58 churches got turned in on the church hotline. Did you know there's a church hotline? You can call up and turn us in. I'm not going to give you the number. I don't know what the number is. But there's an official number and 58 people turned in their churches in the first week. I'm teasing some, but what I'm saying too is this, the, the, the pandemic's making people a little crazy, right? If any of you saw the clip of the two cousins who had not seen each other since it started, and apparently they were very close, played together every week and all that stuff, little boy, little girl, and it had them standing there and the parents were videoing their first time to hug each other in six months or whatever. And these little guys, little, like five and six-year-olds, just broke down in tears in each other's arms. They were sobbing on each other. if, If you don't cry watching that video, there's something wrong with you, okay? It's just, why did I bring that up? I wanted to have the clip, but I couldn't figure out how to get it from YouTube to there, and I didn't want Scott to have to figure out how to drag stuff. I didn't know Sheridan was up there helping. She could have drug it over and it would have been fine. But anyway, um, point is, uh, I think the caption I put under it was something like, you know, the people in our lives, our family and our friends, and the people God allows into our lives are a gift. And they are a gift to be treasured. And particularly those of you with children or grandchildren that are young, find ways to keep them in touch with the people in their lives that matter. I think the great um, unforeseen consequence of what we're choosing to do, one of them, is going to be how it affects our kids and their relationships and how they build relationships and what they're afraid of and, and we're cultivating that they're afraid of people. And people are our greatest treasure other than our salvation in Christ. So just keep that in mind. That's a mini-sermon that's for free because we don't have anything to announce because there's not a lot of stuff happening. We did have a meeting, though, about Awana since uh, Stacy was just up. Uh, We are trying to figure out how to do something in the fall that we can figure out how and what to do safe, but we're still figuring that out. And since the schools are bucking back, Uh, Who knows? But just keep praying. We're trying to figure that out like everybody else is, okay? So we're going to worship the Lord, and then we're going to do prayer requests. I'm going to go check the bucket and see if any of you remembered walking in. Remember our new deal for prayer requests? That's Some of you are going, well, did I walk by something? Yeah, right? You can't walk in that door without tripping over this little lectern that says prayer requests in red letters. And there's an offering plate right there. Get it? We're offering our prayers to the Lord. Get that? See? And that, aren't we just on the ball here? So you drop that in the plate, and I'm going to get those pieces of paper, and Shannon's going to tell us about the folks online. A word to everybody who might be online or in the parking lot. Somewhere. Who's a part of what's happening these days. So let us know those kinds of things. Okay, let's praise the Lord together. And, ooh, he turned me off. You are not supposed to mute me, sir. <laughs> let's stand and sing together. You make it easy to love you. You are good and you are kind. You bring joy into my life. You make it easy to trust you. You have never left my side. You've been faithful every time And all I want is you Jesus, all I want is you Come on, church You are the rest 
if you turn around to you are the fire that leads me through the night i follow you anywhere My place upon that cross You redeem what I had lost Now my whole world revolving around you Yes You're the center of my life You're the treasure, you're the pride And all I instead of the other things we're thinking about life would be so much better take a Surrender your all today. 
it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. You way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. you I worship you Amen 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 Yeah Waymaker, promise mm-hmm. keeper mm. um, Some prayer requests um, Lindsay Serby It's uh, Stacy Meyer's friend We've been praying for her She has MS uh, She's also now positive tested positive with COVID, and pleurisy is a complication. So um, just be prayerful for her. She's got a lot to fight um, and is on oxygen. Thank you all for using the cards out there. It's wonderful. I went out there, there were some in the plate. Some of you put your offering in that plate. That's okay. It got put in the bucket for, don't go out going, somebody stole my money at church. No, no, no. It's in the, off- there's an offering basket on your way out that you can use. Uh, Ronald Tigner has been very ill and has a blood-borne infection, so be prayerful for him. Um, praise, there, uh, there was an announcement on Facebook about a coming granddaughter in December. That's exciting. Um, Mike Whitaker uh, is out of the hospital, feeling much better, changing some medications, and they're hoping that's going to take care of his stuff. Someone uh, logged on and asked us, continue to pray for Sandra Beasley as she's recovering. Um, Frank Cecil continues to be making progress. It's just really slow after a heart transplant. We start thinking things like that are just routine, but a heart transplant, that is a miracle in itself. And just pray for his continued recovery and that he continue to make the progress that needs to be made. Um, Sue asked us to be prayerful for her nephews uh, and wife and their new twins. Regina Jenkins' brother, um, and then Shannon, uh, Shannon Sheeble asks us to be prayerful for the Hanover 911 community, and I think all that's a great reminder to pray for all of our first responders, um, all of our fire, EMS, hospital, um, ER folks, and then particularly I think our, our men and women in blue and law enforcement community. Um, just it, it is a scary, scary time in our culture, and just be prayerful for God to move and work um, and bring about some order and peace. And then uh, Barbara Beal um, shared the one that probably Maxine's about to share, but we got to thank God for some rain, at least in some spots around the county. We got lots of rain, and everybody got a little. Um, and isn't it fascinating? I know it probably is not enough to help the beans or the corn or all that stuff, maybe the beans and not the corn, but um, isn't it amazing how a crunchy brown lawn gets a day uh, with decent rain, and the next morning it's Greening up. Hmm. Kind of like the renewal and the rebuilding that God can do in our lives, right? So 
rain down on us, Lord. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we continue to lift up all these concerns that, that we have mentioned. Um, I failed to go down the list I already had and include Susan Smith, uh, Terry and her family, uh, Bailey uh, and Caden. Um, Father, you know all the needs. You know the needs of our, our country. You know the needs of our world. Father, we're so grateful that we don't go through these things alone, and I'm so thankful that we can share as a church family, even though we can't all get together like we're used to, and even though we can't uh, be there for each other and put a hand on each, each other's shoulder as we would want to, and, but Father, we can lift each other up, and through technology, we can share live in real time concerns and burdens, and, and everybody in our church family online, in the parking lot here, in the fellowship hall, we can all come before you and intercede. Father, we're grateful that we have the gift of prayer. Father, we're grateful, too, that you're a God who moves and works, that you are indeed a way maker. That, Father, you keep your promises, and that, that gives us reason to live in this chaos, knowing that you're a trustworthy God who always is making a way for every one of your people to find your way forward in all the trials and the joys of our lives. So I'll be with us now as we come to your word. Father, speak to our hearts and draw us closer to you. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So I have two corrections to make from last week's service. One is, Charles Barkley did not write Experiencing God. <laughs> you have never seen Scott Stanley so overjoyed. As the when he, he waited to be the last person out of the parking lot, just so he could tell me, you know, you said Charles Barkley wrote Experiencing God, ha, ha, ha. And I said, I did not. Why didn't you stop me then? But I did. Oh, but I know how it happened. I went back and looked at my feeble aging mind. There was a quote I did not use that was in my notes that was from somebody, Charles something, and I had just watch a, watched a clip about Charles Barkley's opinion of what the NBA is choosing to do, which I enjoyed, right before church started. And so, Barkley, Blackaby, Charles, it just kind of, and it just came right out. But the, the blessing that Henry Blackaby has been to our church through experiencing God, I just wanted to correct that in case he saw it and Pray to curse upon us or something, so, which he would not do. But anyway, um, and now I've forgotten what the other correction was, so that's okay. I'll think of it later. Thank you for that encouragement. That's, that makes me feel great. The, the cases of um, the, 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 the um, occurrence rate of walking into a place and having to go, what did I just get up to go do? It's gotten much worse. So I'm going to start taking some... What? Oh, okay. Well, I don't take drugs, but I might have to start taking something. Cause... So I think it is so funny how God works to... to together things without planning them to happen, because today's message, we're going to talk about another, another chapter in the Overcomer, uh, Overcoming book, and, um, and we're going to talk about overcoming temptation with God's Word, and isn't it interesting that we celebrated two kids who have invested their entire childhood into learning God's Word. 800 verses memorized. Now, I don't know, I dare not put Richard on the spot and just say, okay, start, we're counting, and just see if he's still got all 800, and he's shaking his head, no, I won't do it. Okay, I understand. But think that what, <laughs> can there anything bad come from that? It's later in the sermon, I'd probably forget to say it, but um, GQ is not a magazine I read, I just read this quote from it that said that uh, 21 books were listed that you no longer need to read. Guess what made the list? The Bible. Obviously, people who have not read it would say that. 
Because if people had read it, even people who don't believe in the God we believe in would find so much truth for life in it, they would never say, don't read it. But there's such a, a battle to try to squelch out, squeeze out, put the church in its place by so many in our culture that that could go out, and I'm sure there weren't anybody. And here's, what, here's a homework assignment. Figure out how to be, and I know you all fight this battle every day, how to be the strong voice for Christ in a crazy world without sounding crazy. Because if you sound crazy, nobody's going to listen to you about Jesus. Right? You're written off instantly. Well, but I said it anyway. It's like the tree falling in the woods. Did it really make a noise? If they don't hear what we say, what difference does it make that we're saying it? Well, God knows. Yes, he does. But he's called us to become all things to all people. Paul said that we might win some. So that means doing it the way I want to do it, doing it the way you want to do it, just... Be... If it's not effective in touching people's hearts and moving them closer to Jesus, rethink it. Pray hard through it. That's not the sermon either. You've gotten two free sermons so far, and we're not going to get out of here. Basketball game in New York. Al Cavino was the high school, uh, he was the, the, officiate, the offici officiant, the, the referee at the ball game. Ball game comes down to the a last second shot. They're, the home team's down by one. Uh, the opposition takes a shot, bounces off the rim. The other guys run down the court, throw up a shot. It bounces off the rim. A guy goes up for the rebound while he's in the air, puts it back up. The crowd is screaming. They score, home team wins the district championship, so they think. Al Cavino, being the referee, has to go check with the timer because in the, in the eruption of the crowd in the packed gym, they were screaming and he couldn't hear when the buzzer went off. If it's in the air, if the shot was away from his hands by the time the buzzer goes off, it's good, right? Well, they had to know. So he goes over and he asks the 18-year-old high school kid from the team that just scored, whose dad is the coach of that team, when the buzzer sound. Pause. Is that kid experiencing temptations of many kinds in that moment? Huh? How tempted to say, oh no, it's good, it's good. But he knew the buzzer went off well before because the screaming started as soon as the rebound was taken and they start driving up the court and the crowd erupts. And the first shot went off before the buzzer. But the putback did not. The, the referee walked over to the coach shared the news with him. The coach thanked him. Class guy went to his son. And his son was fearful, upset, thought I'm going to be brand or whatever. His dad said, you did exactly the right thing. The only thing you could do. Huh. Take that story home. You probably got the whole sermon. Temptation is real. It's not, it's not, um, sometimes we want to think it like hides from us and we have to go looking for it. No, no, no. The reason temptation is temptation is because temptation looks good, right? Temptation looks good, promises to meet our needs or uh, uh, make us feel good about whatever. So temptation masquerades as because Satan is the great deceiver as something that's really good for us. And it's real easy to fall into. We have to constantly 
be on our guard. It affects everyone. It doesn't matter how knowledgeable you are. It doesn't matter how spiritual you are. Remember, Jesus was tempted in all ways. Hello? That's in the Bible. Jesus was tempted. If being tempted was the sin, Jesus was without sin, so the Bible contradicts itself. It's not that being tempted, it's when we, what we do with temptation that is the problem. I mean, temptation is just normal. Anybody been on a diet and then your family wants to go to Sweet Frog? That ought to be legal, right? If you're like, maybe y'all don't like ice cream and stuff, but man, that's, that's, that's just not nice at all. And having grandchildren around, forget trying to figure out how to die. They eat junk that's bad for you all the time. Even when you try to fix some healthy stuff, they always end up with bad stuff somehow, right? It just happens. And they'll eat two or three pretzels and be happy. But if y'all tried those gluten-free Snyder pretzels, man, they come in this box or this bag, it's like this big, and I can just eat the whole thing. It's just, okay, y'all don't have that problem. It's the lure of temptation. The Bible's very clear on what we're supposed to do when we see, some, see temptation or, or when we face temptation. James 1 says, Let no one say when they're tempted that it's from God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. It's not God who tempts us. He might test us, but God is the one that says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. He who, is, who, he who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make a way of escape, that you'll be able to bear it. That you'll be able to bear it. Escape sounds great. Bear it doesn't sound like so much fun, does it? Living life as, as God wants us to live it is hard work, y'all. Nobody said it'd be easy. Oh, I'm forgiven now, so I can just live however I want. Try that out when you see him face to face. Does anybody really? I mean, I know it sounds good now because we get to excuse ourselves from our bad thinking or our bad living, right? But do we really mean that? Do we want to stand before the holy, perfect Jesus and we find out that the cross is really real, that there really is life after death, that there really is complete and total forgiveness for every thought, every word, every deed, that we are clean before Almighty God when we show up? Do we want to say, well, yeah, I know I kept sinning, but hey, I knew your blood could handle it. I don't think so, y'all. I don't think so. For, it, it, for in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted, Hebrews tells us. The way of escape. The way of escape comes by God. God provides a way. We can say no. Oh, no, Kevin, you've never been the drug user, the alcoholic who gets tempted with... No, I have not. But I can tell you there is something addictive in Diet Coke. Okay? I can tell you there's some, it just is. I don't know why, and I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's the stuff that's supposed to give all lab rats cancer and they die instantaneously or whatever. I don't know what it is. Aspartame. I don't know what it is. It's, but there's something that is addictive in Diet Coke. Two years ago, I guess, I quit drinking diet drinks of any... Remember, I used to drink Mountain Dew like it was water. Diet Mountain Dew. Y'all, some of y'all have been around a long time. Ten years ago, I drank Diet Mountain Dew all the time. And I really think it was eating holes like inside my body. So I stopped all of it. Didn't drink, didn't follow up with Diet Coke, so thinking it's a lesser evil or something. I, did, I just drank, and then I drank so much water down. Do you know you can't go into McDonald's and drive? The one thing about the drive-thru I'm really struggling with since this new take on life with not drinking Diet Coke. If I drank syrup in a cup, I'd be fine, because you go through the thing, you order a sweet tea, but it's syrup. So I like, when I go in and we mix my own, and you can't do that anymore, you go into Diet Coke, get your not best deal around, 99 cents. 20 ounce Diet Coke is $1.89 now. I'd so long ago, when I dropped them the first time, they were only 99 cents, okay? Now they're $1.89 for one 
two liter bottle is $1.99. A 20 ounce bottle because it's in the refrigerator is $1.89. Just anyway, I'll move on. So you go order your Diet Coke. If you order, I mean, you're, you see, it's a habit. It's, it's, if you order your sweet tea, you get that cup that's all ice. And it's really only about two ounces of tea because it's all filled up with the ice. So I go in, I order. I want light ice. And I want a tea that is three quarters water and about that much sweet tea. How do you do that much over the thing? Right? And if you say, I want about an inch of sweet tea, they're like, an inch? This is liquid we're measuring. You don't measure liquid in inches. And so then you go 50 50. 50 50 is still syrup, y'all. Does anybody here drink sweet tea from McDonald's straight? Really? You, really? Man, I think I'd, I'd explode. The sugar would just, I, man. Wow. So anyway, so in the store, I could tell them <coughs> if they wouldn't, when they, for some of the places stopped serving, you had to, and anyway. Point is, there's something in Diet Coke. Ever since I made the commitment, felt convicted to stop doing the Diet Coke thing again, which Brenda is ecstatic about. Oh, I told you you should have done that a long time. Anyway. I like drive past the McDonald's and just want to go and get me a large Diet Coke light ice, right? I, I, want to, I want to leave early for church and see if they're down at Sparta Market yet to get my Diet Coke and get a little caffeine because I don't drink coffee and all that stuff. So no, I cannot understand the addiction to cigarettes, the addiction to drugs, the addiction to all kinds of other things. Addiction's real. And temptation, the, the, uh, the dark side doesn't have to work hard to work on those areas in our lives that we are most tempted, does he? But God provides a way. He provides sweet tea watered down with water to help the people like me who want to get over Diet Coke. Well, let's talk about... The last truth uh, it, that's in this, this supply list, this armor list in Scripture, when we put on the full armor of God, uh, let's just read the whole passage. Use every piece of God's armor to resist the enemy at the time of evil, so that after the battle you'll be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the sturdy belt of truth, the body armor, the shield of righteousness, for sh excuse me, shoes put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you'll be fully prepared. And in every battle... Previously, these are all defensive tools. Now we call on offense. You need faith as your shield to stop the fire arrows aimed at you. Put on salvation as your helmet. Sorry. Now take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Take the sword of the Spirit. Interesting word, a couple of words we're going to talk about today. The word used for sword here is, is more like dagger. Six to 18 inches. It is a lethal hand-to-hand -hand battle tool, okay? It's not the big sword that's 42 feet long and it's, goosh, goosh, you know, it's not, no, this is, this is when you're up close and personal and you're fighting for your life. So it's at most this long, okay? That's important because the word that was used for word, which is usually in scripture logos, which means the word, the whole thing, instead is rhema. And it's more specific. It means a word from the Lord. Let's apply that a minute. Could it be that in our temptation, the Lord doesn't provide us a generic, Jesus loves you, but instead provides a word for you that is the strength you need for that circumstance at that time? Has anybody in this room had that happen to you? I have had that happen a lot. You're reading the Bible, you've read the same passage in your devotion over and over and over again, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden you read a passage, and it is exactly for you on that day and the struggle you are facing. You read your open windows every day of the year sitting in the bathroom. And this day, you read it, and all of a sudden, it's like you want to jump up and run out of the bathroom and forget to pull your pants up, because it's just, whoa, this is what I need today! Don't act like y'all don't read open windows in the bathroom. I could make a terrible old preacher joke, but why do you think it's called open window? Never mind, that's just so <laughs> bad. And all you Methodists are going, that's why we called ours daily bread. I understand that on... <laughs> 
So if, that, if, you can, if you can go with that application with me for a minute, then the Word of God becomes not just the Word, the big sword that's ready to conquer the world, but it becomes like an armory. It becomes like an armory where God has every tool for defense or offense that you'll need in any of the temptations you will face. The kicker is you and I have to go to the armory. We have to spend time in God's Word. Ray Steadman wrote, Sometimes when you're reading a passage of Scripture, the words seem to come alive. They take on flesh and bone and leap off the page. You gr- or grow eyes that follow you around everywhere you go. Don't you hate when that one happens? When you feel like God's just going, I told you this morning, right? Or develop a voice that echoes in your ears until you can't get away from it. This is the rhema of God, the sayings of God that strike home like arrows to the heart. This is the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Jesus is the perfect example of using the word of God <coughs> to overcome the temptations of Satan, right? He went out into the wilderness. He had just had this real, this real grand time when he heard from God Uh, to him at least audibly and probably those around that this is my son whom I'm well pleased. He's ready to roll. Doesn't temptation always follow a great season? As soon as something goes wonderful, those of you that are prone to the sin of pride, it always follows great accomplishment, right? Been there, done that. People just pat you on the back, telling you good job, and all of a sudden you start believing and going, yeah, I'm something. And you forget that we're nothing but sinners deserving of hell except for the grace of Jesus Christ. Right? Happens to all of us. Temptation is real. We think temptation is only about pornography. It's only about drugs. It's only about stealing, lying. No, think of all the little things you're tempted to do. To not tell your spouse the whole truth. To try to hide something on Amazon until it gets there. Go, I don't know how that box got there. Well, it says it cost $382. Who hit the button? Well, I, I don't know. But look, it's so good. Brenda ordered some stuff. No, Brenda never does that. But Brenda ordered some stuff the other day, and Arthur, our UPS guy, came by like at, after apparently Amazon had made like three stops. <laughs> Because the, there were so many boxes in front of the door, you couldn't get to the door. There were big boxes because they packed little stuff in big, I don't know why they did. Anyway, and at our house, it's amazing whenever the new Amazon trucks even find the house, okay? Arthur knows where we live. Some of the FedEx people know where we live, but the Amazon people, they're coming from Kalamazoo. Who knows? And so they're pulling into my house asking for this one and that one. And So Arthur comes up and he, he's like, Huh, had a great day on Amazon, huh? I'm late to the game. Hands it off to us. Some, for some, a temptation that you have to overcome is Amazon. Hello. Woo! <laughs> Several folks are looking one. what's an Amazon? Isn't that a river? No, it's okay. No, it means you can shop and not leave your house. I think it's so funny. Now you can buy a brand new car and not leave your house. They'll come do the test drive and... Side of the paperwork at your kitchen table. and Anyway, not that I've done one. I don't buy new cars. Can't afford them. So, Matthew 4. Jesus was led up by the Spirit to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Afterward, he was hungry. Now the tempter came to him and said, If you're the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. Satan said to Jesus, Why not satisfy your hunger? Perform a simple little miracle. If you're the Son of God, what's the harm in turning this little rock into a loaf of bread? What's the harm? Who's going to get hurt? What difference will it really make? It's not a big deal. Is any of this sounding familiar to anybody? Does anybody else have this self-talk demon go on in your head, or is it just me? Right? Whenever you're having that kind of self-talk to minimize your decision or your action, can, it, can I tell you, turn on a flasher light. Get in the car and blow the horn. That is like even your own psyche and the Holy Spirit's going, eh, 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 don't do it. <coughs> Jesus responds with a rhema, word of God. He says... Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus with the punk Satan. 
Jesus could have looked at him with his super burner laser eyes and poof, Satan could have been gone, right? He could have just smacked him and knocked him all the way back to hell where he belongs. Instead, Jesus showed us that we can do the battle and we can win the battle just by quoting God's word to the devil. Hello? We can do that, right? Can any of us in here not utter the words, don't tempt God? Right? We can win the battle too. If Jesus would have done the spectacular movie thing, and I'd have loved for him to do the superhero thing there on the cross, or lots of, I just would have been, and poof and the smoke. And, wouldn't it be a great movie if he'd have just done that to Satan, just annihilated him? But instead, he showed us how we too can win the battle every day, every time we face temptation. The lust of the eyes, Matthew 5, 4, 5, and 6. The devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, said to him, If you're the Son of God, throw yourself down. Might have been as high as 450 feet. Satan was saying, If you don't work a miracle yourself, let God do the miracle for you. You jump off, God will send all of his angels, right? Catch, you'll land soft. You won't splat. And everybody in the temple court will know that you're something special. Plan on that sense of pride and build it up. The first temptation, Satan tried to get him to distrust his father, to be independent, make his own bread. And the second, he was trying to get Christ to be presumptuous and jump from the temple so his father would be forced to act. Oh, I'd never do that. Hello? How many of us say something like, well, I know I shouldn't, but it's no big thing. God will take care of me. Huh? If <laughs> Somebody's listening. That's great. It is absolutely right for us to believe in miracles. It is absolutely wrong for us to schedule them for God. Wish that was my line. It's not. We are to expect God to move and to act, but don't, don't put it in his face. God, I'm going to step out in traffic right in the middle of 95 and you're going to protect me. He might. He might. It might be a tractor trailer wreck right in front of you that blocks the whole road and everybody hates you for the next three days. Or God might say, I can't fix the S-T-U-P-I-D word. We do have little people here, so I didn't want to say it. When Satan responded to Jesus in Matthew 4, 6, he quoted scripture. He said it's written, he shall give angels charge over you, and in their hands they'll bear you up, and not, you won't dash your foot against a stone. Sometimes if we think it's scripture, we think, well, it's got to be good, it's got to be from God. Satan knows the word too, and misuses it, and sometimes we do the same. You've all heard um, versions, I guess, of, a, of a, the, the neighbor that... that um, that uh, quoted the scripture that said he went out and hung himself, and the neighbor responded, they had a fight, and you know, wanted to get rid of it, and he responds back with scripture that says, and the Bible also says, and you should go and do likewise. And then he fired, he fired back and said, and be quick about it. I mean, they're all, they're misusing, they're taking chunks. Of, anytime you can only pull out three words of scripture, or a verse of scripture, and it doesn't match the rest of it, just know that you're trying to justify your own decision. Right? Oh, I got a word from the Lord. The whole rest of Scripture would just pull it out. You know, we'd, you could just take out a passage like gouge your eyes out. <laughs> let's, let's have a... Yeah, eye for an eye is a great one. Thank you. But let's read the whole context. Let's read the whole of Scripture. Let's put Jesus as the lens through which we read all the rest of it through. And then make a decision. And thirdly, the, the, the third temptation of Jesus was, again, the devil took him on an exceedingly high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory, and he said to him, all these things I'll give you if you fall down and worship me. Jesus could have done that one. Wouldn't have had to do the cross. Wouldn't have had to suffer. 
he's going to end up in charge anyway. But instead, he pulled out the rhema of God and said, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And then Matthew 4.11 says, And then the devil left him. He couldn't stand the constant presence of the word of God. Do you know what? In our lives, he can't stand to be around Jesus either. So if you want him out of your life and you want him to quit messing with you and leave you alone, spend more time in God's word. James 4, 7 says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. (laughs) David Jeremiah put a paragraph in the book and said, going to church is a dangerous thing if your pastor preaches from the Bible. Hello? So, and the point he was making was, the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, able to divide bone and sinew. That's dangerous. I'm not dividing bone and sinew, but if I share the word of God from this place, and anybody who's up here and does, it better be dangerous for all of us. Because we're all broken, sinful people who have a bent toward sinning. And we need the constant infilling of the Word of God through the Holy Spirit to help us battle temptation. So how do we do this Word of God thing? Do we all just sign up for Awana and Stacy has the biggest crowd she's ever had, even if we're doing it independently at home? Right? And all the adults have to do it too, and the adults have to learn the verses before their kids get their book checked off. That's the way it ought to be. Can't you see all the kids going, Mom, you're killing me. You're four verses behind. (laughs) Did you know if you listen to the Bible on CD or online, if you listen to the Bible, how many minutes a day do you think you have to listen to get through the whole Bible in a year? Each day, 365 days. 13 minutes a day. It's about 75 hours total, but spread out over 365 days. So maybe if you read it instead of listen to it, you read slower than, what's the, who's the, who's the guy that always reads the Bible years ago? Boris somebody or something? He, he always talked like, I don't know. You, you haven't ever heard those guys read the Bible? Anyway, never mind. Who doesn't have 13 minutes a day? You read slow, take 15 minutes a day. 15 minutes how long does it take you to drink your cup of coffee I don't drink coffee so I have no idea and I can't use my diet coke addiction because I can down a McDonald's diet coke in like 32 seconds it just and then I want another one see there's something in them Ray I'm telling you there's something in them Paul said to Timothy, Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture and to preaching and teaching. Devote yourself. We need to learn more than our pet verses in Scripture. We need to learn more than just the New Testament. We need to learn the Word of God and have it speak to us. Can I just tell you that I struggle here too? I got 15. Now we've all got 15 hours a day because there's nothing else to do. You're not supposed to go anywhere. You're not supposed to do anything. You're not supposed to... So we've got the time, and we've all got a smartphone. Well, most of us have a smartphone in our pocket. We can click a button on it and then hit the little uh, speaker button. We don't even have to read it. They'll just read it to us. On you version, you can pick from like 150 translations and just hit the button. They'll read it to you. And those of us who spend gazillions of hours in the car, how many times do we have to listen to the same ten songs on WFLS? Right? They play the same playlist. 90 Joy, or PER plays the same. I choose PER. But they only play the top 40 maybe, but usually it's about 15 or 20 of the top 40. So if you listen to the radio all day long, you hear the same music over and over and over. Those of you that are the news junkies, if you turn on Fox News or CNN, pick one, and you see the same news every 30 minutes, it's just recycled. Well, then the commentators come up, and what do they talk about? The same news that was just on in all the world. 
In 24 hours, there's only 20 to 28 minutes worth of news that's worth speaking in the day. Hello? The whole world. The whole world. Six billion plus people. Are we seven billion yet? I don't know. Six or seven billion people. I don't even know how many countries. This big old round ball we live on and there's only 28 minutes of news every 24 hours. Really? Maybe take 15 minutes off and read some. Get this. Oh, this is good. It just came to me. Read some good news. Ah, ha, ha. Did, did. Come on, that was pretty good, y'all. Okay? Built up the whole news thing and then said, read some good. Y'all don't appreciate my humor. <laughs> Guys, if we, if we don't spend time in God's word, we're in danger of being tricked and deceived. I had a friend who what time it's, we're, we're late. Um, I had a friend who was an who is an accountant, but he, he's a CFO now. And I <laughs> I started out trying to get into business school at UVA. Wouldn't that have been an adventure? <laughs> Woo! And I took accounting 101 and 102. And I was in accounting, and the, what are they called? The FASBAs or FASBs or something? It's the rules that come out each year, and it's this book of them, and you have to know them. And our professor. Who, I forget his name, but he had one arm and he was mean and oh, it was terrible. But anyway, he said, he said, learn them. And if you're an accountant, you need to know them because if your boss calls you into the office and he says, what does rule 28.2 say? You better know it. And I, being a <laughs> pre-ministerial student, <laughs> I foolishly raised my hand in the business school and said, well, it seems kind of silly to waste your time learning all those. If you got the book sitting right there, just go look it up. Woo! Wrong thing to say. He glared at me and said, you try that with your boss and you'll be fired by the end of the day. I went, well, time for me to get out to business school. <laughs> but he's right. If we face Satan and we need the word of God and we need it right now, and we just go, wait just a minute, let me go get my concordance. Hold up, let me pull up you version and do a word search. Have you ever tried doing a word search and you learned it in the wrong translation and you can't find it? I do that all the time. I get ready for a sermon and I'll, the, the verse that's stuck in my head, I can quote it, don't, can't remember where it is, but I know it's there. So I'll, I'll quote the whole, I'm, I'm typing, and nothing will come up. I go, oh, maybe it's King James. So I go back, it's not King James. Sometimes it's like RSV or something. I'm like, how'd that happen? We need to know it if we're ready for battle. And the scriptures say, so we can stand. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your word. God, forgive us for... I can't speak for everybody in the room, God, but I can speak for me. And I know that I don't spend enough time in your word most of the time. And God, I don't think you want us to be reading it nonstop. I don't think you care that we, that we just like don't do anything else in our lives. But God, help us to spend daily time in your word. Help it to be the norm instead of the exception. Father, I pray that you would just help us to, 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 to hunger for, to want your truth because we know we need it to face each day. Help us to overcome temptation, not by our will or our willpower, not by getting a group of people together to help us. But, Father, those are all good things. But, Father, help us to fight the greater temptations by getting to know you better. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm in the way up there. If you need to respond in some way, um, I think the band's going to play a little bit of Waymaker. And... Um, if you need to respond, do it right where you are. Sit down while we stand and sing or uh, come forward if you're... Oh, my mask's up there. I'll do this if you come forward. Um, but if you need to respond, if temptation is something you're battling, my hunch is, even in a room this size, it's like a third of a normal crowd or less. Oh, thank you. It flew over the TV. Um, but if you're battling with something, can I tell you the source of strength? 
that wants to help is Jesus. So go to him today. You don't have to come here. Yeah, that's fine. But deal with it. Deal with it where you are. Let him help. If you're online and you're struggling, send a message. Shannon will get it or I'll get it. We'll be in touch. Email privately if you don't want it to be on the feed. That's okay. The key is he's up there with this reserve of strength and help for all his people, and he wants us to be holy, to fulfill the purpose he created us for and wants nothing to stand in the way, and he's already defeated the one who's yanking our chains. Mm -hmm. But we have to ask. Mm -hmm. So if you need to respond, you do that. Let's stand and sing. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. You are we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are, we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are. Touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, healing every life, I worship you, I worship you. being the one who makes a way forward for us. You've already laid out the words of life in your, in your book. You've already showed us the way of life and given us the living word, your son who came and changed all of history for every one of us. God, I pray that you'd help us to face the temptations of life with your word, with your presence, with your people, and with your Holy Spirit, because you promise we're never alone. You're with us always. We'll never know God forsakenness because you are with us always through the darkest days, through the struggles of our own making, through those that just come at us and we had nothing to do with it. And Father, through the greatest joys in our life, you are present and you are real. So Father, help us to live for you each and every day. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. My God. That is who you are. You are we make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. We make a miracle worker. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 
you are way maker miracle worker promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are here way maker i worship you have a great week amen god bless you all One day there'll be no more waiting left for our souls One day there'll be no more children longing for home One day when the kingdom comes right here where we stand We will see the promised land mm. One day there'll be no more lives taken too soon one day there'll be no more need for a hospital One day every tear that falls will be wiped by his hand And we will see the promised land mm -hmm.